Hello students, a very very good morning. I am happy to be back with still another video. A full exercise of Unit 8, Theme, Humor and Satire and the title of the lesson is A Few Kind Words for Superstition. Now let's begin our lesson. Turn to page 74 of your book ways with words a match the following a transcendental matches with four spiritual non-physical or mystical b deplore matches with one to feel or express strong disapproval of something c absolve matches with number six set free from blame guilt or responsibility release D. Zuzu matches with number two, a charm or fetish used by some West African people. E. Crude matches with number three, natural state. F. Chronicle matches with number five, a written record of historical events. Number B. Find the contextual meanings of the following words from the text and then use them in sentences of your own. A. Condemn. Express complete disapproval of or censor. People condemned this kind of superstitious practices in the name of religion. B. Terror. Horror. Don't spread terror in our society. C. Unbidden. Without having been commanded or invited. The troop entered the unbidden land. D. Persist to continue doing something. If you persist in that job, you will be mad. E. Devout in a manner that shows deep religious feeling or commitment. They were a devout believers of this useless be belief. F. Banish Send someone away from a country or place as an official punishment. He was banished from the state for his misdeed. G. Greed, a system of religious belief, of faith. They had set up this kind of creed and culture in their community. Hasten to hurry. Don't hasten in making money. I sober simple and proper. I like his sober personality. J. Scorn, a feeling and expression of contempt or disdain that is dislike or disapproval for someone or something. He scorned when he heard the true story of that place. K. Yearning, desiring, we were yearning to reach that place. L. Aloof, a very proud and uninterested. She acted quite aloof in that party. M. Swarthy, dark complexioned. They looked swarthy due to suntan. Or they looked swarthy as they sunbathed every day. N. Humbler. Simple and down to earth. She was humbler than her sisters. Now question C. One of the ways to understand words and their meanings is to learn the origin of the word. For example, the word expand, which means to spread out or extend, comes from Middle English expandum, derived from the Latin word expanders, EXX that means out, pandir that means to spread. Trace the origins of each of the following words, finding such explanations in a dictionary or the internet. Then make sentences by using each word. A. Minatory. Minatory comes from derivative of the Latin verb minary, which means to threaten. Minatory was borrowed directly from late Latin minatorins. Latin word minatorius comes from Latin minory, Latin torius, tori, that is O-R-Y, which is used to form an adjective, which means threatening. 
he is unlikely to be deterred by minatory finger wagging. U orule onla halaike adharma darone khalku manche hoina. B. Placated. The word is derived from Latin word placatus. Placate still carries the basic meaning of its Latin ancestor to soothe or to appease. Make someone less angry or hostile. They attempted to placate the students with promises. See cajoled, borrowed from French word cajoler. That means to give much attention to, make a fuss over, a flatter, persuade with flattery. Persuade someone to do something by sustained coaxing or flattery. He hoped to casual her into settling the house. Mito kura gorera unisita karbar posauna khojyo. D. Antidates. From Latin ante, which means before, plus date. Uh, so, it means to date before the true time. Proceed in time, come before in date. There was a civilization that antedated the Roman Empire. E. Proliferated. Proliferation came first, borrowed it from French in the 18th century and was later shortened to form the verb proliferate. The French adjective prolifer, reproducing freely, comes from the Latin noun proles and the Latin combining form fer. Proliferated. Increase rapidly in member. Multiply. Electromagnetic radiation can only proliferate cancers already present. F. Filter. P -h -i -l -t -e -r, P-H-I-L-T-E-R. Filter. French filter. This word comes from Latin filtrum, a plural of filtra, love potion. From Greek filtron, a love charm. Properly, filtron literally means to make oneself beloved. A drink supposed to arouse love and desire for a particular person in the drinker, a love potion. He was secretly offered a filter. Now number C, list any five words found in an English dictionary beginning with the prefix super. What common meaning do all of these words share? How do the words in your list change meaning if you eliminate the prefix? Actually, super, the word super gratifies something or makes it very big. Like success means just, you know, a success. But if we add a prefix like super, she is a super success. That means she's not only successful, but very, very successful. So when we add this word super to any word, it implies the same thing in a very big amount. Like for example, the movie was hit. But when we add the prefix super, it becomes super hit. That means the movie was very, very hit or popular. Some examples of other words with the prefix super. Students, if you don't know the meaning of these words, please find them in the dictionary. Supernatural, supersonic, superficial, supersede, superhit, superimposed, superintendent, super talented, super success, supreme court, super balance, supremacy, superiority, Super bouncy, superlative. Now we have come to the comprehension part. Answer these questions. This is on page 74. A. According to the author, what are the four types of superstition? Four types of superstition according to the author are first is what they call vain observances, such as not walking under a ladder throwing a pinch of salt over one soldier in order to hit the devil in the eye, not crossing the road when seeing a black cat cross it. Number 13 is an unlucky number. People believe in it merely by observing it. 
or hearing someone talk about it. Number two, the second form is divination or consulting oracles. Example, to settle a problem by tossing a coin, which is a humble appeal to fate to declare itself. Consulting fortune tellers, uh, palm readers, or astrologers. Number three, the third form is idolatry, lucky charms, jujus, or lucky coins, taking certain things as idols. Number four, the fourth form is improper worship of the true God, like bribery of the deity, sacrifices to gods, bhakal gornu pansan, thinking that deity might help in solving your problem. B. Which language is the word superstition derived from? What does it mean? Answer. According to theologians, the word superstition comes from the Latin word super sisto, which means to stand in terror of the deity. Most people keep their terror within bounds, but they cannot root it out, nor do they seem to want to do so. See, how do psychologists understand superstition? Answer. Psychologists understand superstition as a compulsion neurosis. Some people's brains are programmed in such a way that they have to do certain things in certain ways. It's very difficult to change that mindset because it is already instilled in him or her. D. How does superstition differ from religion? Answer. Superstition seems to have a link or connection with some body of belief that far antedates or precedes the religions. We know that religion does not have any place for such comforting little ceremonies or charities. Superstition in general is linked to man's yearning or desire to know his fate and to have some hand in deciding it. But religion doesn't have such thing. E. What is the belief of some people in the Middle Europe about sneezing? Some people of Middle Europe believe that when a man sneezes, his soul for that moment is absent from his body, so they hasten to bless him so that the devil doesn't seize his soul. F. In the author's view, why are people so fascinated about superstition? Answer. According to the author, people are so fascinated about superstition as it seems to have a link with some body of belief that far antedates the religion. People who like disagreeable historical ceremonies recall that when Rome was in decline, superstition proliferated widely and something of the same sort is happening not just in Western world but all around the world. Astrology is very popular in the world today. That is why newspapers around the world carry astrology columns, fashion magazines count them among their most popular features. Mankind has never gone into science wholeheartedly till today. People are so much into superstition as it is linked to man's desire to know his fate, his destiny or his future and to have some hand in deciding it. Now critical thinking part on page 75. A. What is the key takeaway of this essay? Do you think that this essay is satirical? Why? Answer. This essay was written on the basis of the discussion of the writer Mr. Robertson Davis with his friends on the topic, the Renaissance of the Irrational. The 10 things that I learned from reading this essay are as follows. Number one, superstitious beliefs are carried down from one generation to another, so they are deep-rooted not only in the minds of 
uneducated and ignorant people, but also in the learned and rational thinking people, such as professors and students. Number two, we are so much anxious about our fate and future, which are vague and unpredictable. So we consult oracles, astrologers, fortune tellers, and palm readers. Number three, taking the right decisions at certain points of our life becomes so difficult and risky that desperately we toss a coin and let the fate to declare itself or consult the I Ching for the right advice. Number four, people of all ages believe in luck and they are afraid of bad luck. This is depicted in the form of idolatry. So even educated people take the help of jujus, lucky coins, lucky charms, and other bingers of luck in various situations of their life. Number five, no matter from which nation we are, but we believe in the bribery of the deity, which is also called improper worship of the true God. This is because we believe that God is almighty and he has the power to make even impossible things happen in this world. Number six, this is also the reason why we believe in supernatural powers existing in this world. They believe in good and bad spirits, life after death, existence of human souls, which is immortal, and above all, they have fear of the deity. Number seven, superstition has been deep rooted in the human mind from childhood itself. Even scientific education has not been able to uproot it completely. Number eight, the essay is satirical because the writer of this essay, who is a professor himself, cannot deny the fact that being so educated and learned also, he is somewhat influenced by superstition. Number nine, people know that superstitious beliefs are illogical, unscientific, and unexperimented, but still they have been believing them for centuries. Really, superstition has ridiculed science and modern people. It is funny to say that people who believe in logic and science are controlled by illogical and superstitious beliefs. Number 10, when people are in bad stages of life, especially in sorrowful and tragic situations, these superstitions influence them wildly and they take the help and support of superstition for comforting and pacifying them. For example, when Rome was in decline, superstition existed and spread widely and something of the same sort is happening in the Western world today. Question B, can education bring changes in the belief of superstition? Present your arguments to support your answer. No matter how much we have tried, science, logic, modernization, and rationality has not been able to eradicate superstition from this world. It will remain in one form or the other to different levels depending on the situation and lifestyle of the person. Even educated and knowledgeable people are superstitious in their own ways. They may deny the fact but it is seen in their actions somehow and somewhere or the other. Superstitious beliefs exist due to fear of the unknown, fear of future, bad luck, and due to curiosity of your fate and destiny. One should be taught and made deeply aware that these things are uncertain and we should be able to accept them as they come in our life. But it will take time to eradicate superstition from this world as it is deeply rooted and is carried down from one generation to another. Of course, education can make people less superstitious, but not completely. There are so many risks and unknown factors in our life like nobody knows why we have to die, how we will die, 
and where we will go after our death. Even our scientific knowledge and education cannot answer these questions for us. So people take the help of superstition for their comfort, assurance and for pacifying themselves. What we can say in this matter is that it is completely fine and acceptable to be superstitious in your own ways. You can have superstitious beliefs, but it should not affect other people or their lives. It should not interfere others. You live your life with your own beliefs and let them live theirs. Now comes the writing part. Question A. Write an essay on superstitions that exists in your community in about 250 words. Students, for this also, I will not write the essay itself, but I'll give you 10 hints. With the help of those hints and your own ideas, you have to write the essay yourself. Superstition still exists in my community. On certain days of the week and month, we should not bath. When we see a black cat crossing the road, we should stop and not walk across. Cleaning a house at night or in the darkness is very inauspicious. Washing clothes at night or in the dark is inauspicious. Eating meat on certain religious days like Ekadasi is considered inauspicious. Back part of the feet, shoes and slippers are taken as very unlucky, so you should not show them to anyone. White clothes are worn only on sad occasions. Married men and women should not wear completely white dresses. Broken glasses or utensils are taken as very unlucky. Touching things without washing hands while eating is taken as unholy and unclean. Wearing shoes inside the house and rooms, not tying hair while eating or cooking is unclean. Besides these, there are so many superstitious beliefs we practice in our life. Now question B, superstition is prevalent in every walk of life. Argue for or against this statement. I'm arguing for this statement, okay students? If you believe that there is no superstition uh, in every walk of your life, then you can of course write or argue against this statement, saying that no, this statement is false. But I think uh, there is superstition in every walk of our life. So I'm writing my answer for this statement, all right, and not against it. My answer to this would be, this is very true. In spite of the vast scientific and technological developments in the world, there are many people, including the young, modern and highly educated ones who believe in superstition. Superstition is prevalent in every walks of life. Like for example, number one, we don't go abroad or in faraway places without taking sagoon in the form of good omen or good wishes from our elders in the house. Number two, we don't have the meals of the day without offering a little bit to the deities we worship. Number three, we wear or carry lucky charms when we go to give exams or perform difficult tasks. Number four, we consult astrologers and oracles to fix an auspicious date and time when we do any puja or perform any important functions at home. Number five, we perform daily activities of our life, such as bath, clean, eat meat, leave home, or start our career or business only on certain auspicious day or hour. Number six, we perform various ceremonies of our life, such as pasni or rice feeding ceremony, brataband, ihi or gufa ceremony, marriage ceremony, and all from birth to death ceremonies on special dates and hours only after consulting with our family priests and astrologers. Thus, we can say that superstition is still prevalent in our every walk of life. Now turn to page 78 students. At the end, there is a project work. Interview some people in your locality. Ask them what kind of superstitions 
they grew up with. Ask everyone whether they believe in those superstitions at present or not. Prepare a news article including their responses. Your prepared news article should not be too long. So in this you can include viewpoints of about six or seven people. So you can interview about uh, six to seven people. And in this news article, you can write in a reported speech saying, I asked uh, seven people this question and this is how each one responded to my question. Uh, this is what A said. This is what B said. This way you collected primary data from the direct source that is by talking or interviewing people directly and you are presenting them in reported speech in your article. This way your article will be very trustworthy, authentic and interesting. Now let me define what is a news article. Some also call it a newspaper article. Students, I hope you remember we have learned about this in class 10 also. If you still remember what you learned in class 10, then this, this will be a kind of reflection or uh, let's say revision. Let me refresh. News articles are written to inform and educate readers on current affairs or events. They are used to provide readers with information they need or want to know about the world around them. What are the five parts of a news article? Structure of a news article or news report. Number one, you should write a headline at the top. It tells what the story is about. Then the byline below it or just below the body of the news article. It tells about the writer of the story or the reporter. The lead, that is the head part of the news article. This covers the most important facts and then the body, main body of the news article. This includes a detailed account of the event or occurrence. In the lead part, you can write what is this article about and in the body part to how many people you interviewed, what did they say or what was their answer to your question. Then the ending or the conclusion. In this, you have to wrap up the news article by talking about the solution or something to think about. Students, we find many kinds of news articles published in newspapers. They are written in different styles, but in this one, you have to inform people about superstitious beliefs they were instilled with, and if these beliefs are still in their minds. As I told you, you have to carry out a survey with a couple of people and report or write about what you found in a reported or indirect speech. If you have further questions in this, you can always write to me in comment section. Thank you and see you all in our next lesson. Bye-bye.